recording. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord Jesus is so awesome. Amen. Amen. Tonight I'm going to share with you a message that I call Jesus will set you free. Amen. And so uh, uh, Sylvia is going to read for us from John chapter 8 from verse 30. Yes. Okay. John chapter 8 verse 30. Yeah. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. Mm -hmm. How sayest thou, you shall be free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you are be free indeed. I know that you are Abram's seed, but you seek to kill me, because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father and do that which you have seen with your father. Verse 39. They answered and said unto him, Abram is our father. Jesus said unto them, If you were Abram's children, you would do the works of Abram. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abram. Verse 41. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? You are of your father the devil, and the last of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speak, speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Which of you convinces me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's word. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are, you are not of God. Then answered yeah, the Jews. Yeah, just so far. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Sylvia. Wow, the word of God is powerful. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we come to you in the Whoa. name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we thank you for the word of God. And we pray tonight Whoa, that yes. the Holy Spirit come. Yes, Lord. And speak to us. Yes. Lord Jesus, reveal yourself to us tonight. In the name of Jesus. And let us experience and encounter you walking in our midst and ministering to people. Yes, yes, Lord. That people walk out of here free with, with loads taken off them. In the name of Jesus, in a new way, in Jesus' name, we give you all the glory. Amen. 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 So, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, this um, translation that, uh, what translation was that? Is that King James? King James. King James. All right. And it, the King James is good translation, but, but sometimes... The language is older, all right? So in, in, in the newer translation, when he says there to them, that when they, Jesus says to them, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. They then say, we are Abram's children and we have never been slaves. Okay? Now, let me ask you this. Is this true or not? Hello? Were, were they, the people of the Israelites ever slaves or not? They were slaves in Egypt. Come on. 
But they say we were never slaves. <laughs> okay. So now they claim Abraham, right? Do you know this is so amazing? In in Genesis 15, the Lord appears to Abraham. Yes. And he says to him that out of your seed I will bring forth a multitude of people. Yes. And he says, I don't have a son. Uh, let my servant Eliezer be. And he says, no, no, no. He takes him out. He shows him the stars. Yes. And, you know, this is, the th this is so wonderful in South Africa. Mm. Uh, the, when the air is clean and you go a little bit out of, of the city, mm. you can see many stars, right? Yes. And when you look at those stars, the Lord said to him, you look at these stars. Yo. He says, your descendants will be as numerous Yo. and as countless Yo. as the stars. Yo. Now comes a famous uh, uh, word that we all know, or if you have been a believer for a while, you know this. Because then it says, Abraham. That what? Believed. Believed. Yes. yes. And it was counted to him as? Righteousness. Righteousness. Yes. Come on. Amen. He believed. Yes. He had no evidence. No. Come on. Hallelujah. He's 99 years old. Yeah. And the Lord says, you are going to be the father of many. Yes. His wife, Sarah, is 89 years old. Hello? Amen. How many of you know you're supposed to be great-grandmama then already? Yeah. Hello? Amen. And she doesn't have one child. And the Lord says, this miracle is coming. Yeah. And but it's going to lead to multitudes. And Abram believes. But then he says, how can I know that this is true? Now something is going to happen. You see, in Middle Eastern culture, there was a way that when people wanted to make a contract, they would make a covenant. Okay. Mm. And what they would do, they would slaughter several an animals. They would cut them in half mm. and put the two halves on, e on each side. Mm. And then the two parties that are making the covenant walks through between these cut animals. Yes. The reason is you're basically saying that if I break this covenant, mm -hmm. I will be cut in half. I <laughs> okay? But Abram puts the pieces of the animals down, and then he falls asleep. <laughs> Actually, I think he got slain in the spirit. Yes. Okay? The, Holy, the, the, the Lord, the God just knocks him down. <laughs> He's out. Now, through these um, pieces of, of animals, this, these carcasses, comes a big fire pot. Yes, Lord. Yeah. This is the, the Lord cutting covenant <laughs> with Abraham. Amen. This is the Abrahamic covenant. Mm. 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 Okay? Amen. Now listen to the first words the Lord says to him as he is confirming the covenant. He says, your ancestors, uh, not your ancestors, your descendants, yes. know this for sure that your descendants will be enslaved for 400 years in Egypt. Come on. Yes. Remember what these Pharisees said to Jesus? We've never been 
been slaves. <laughs> and they claim Abraham. And part of the Abrahamic covenant was this, that they will be enslaved for 400 years. And then they will be brought out to come and take possession of the land. Okay? Amen. Now, we find them in Egypt and God raises up Moses. And they are slaves. Sure. And their bitter struggle of slavery is crying out to the Lord. And the Lord raises up Moses Amen. to come and deliver them. Moses is a type of Jesus. Amen. Okay? Yeah. But Moses was the human being the Lord used. But do you know that in Jude... Do you know there's, there's, a, there's a book in the New Testament called Jude? Yes, yes. one chapter. One chapter. Yeah. Verse 4, I believe it is. Mm. He says this, and I have read this many, many times, sure. and I've never seen this except mm. today for the first time. Uh, okay. He says there that Jesus sure. delivered the people of Israel out of Egypt. Right. <laughs> That's what it says there. Go and read. Open your Bible and check whether I'm saying the right thing. And then it says, and then he killed them in the desert. Yes. <laughs> Is that what it says there? Yes. It says so, right? I have never read this before, but that it says Jesus. Because you see, we often in the New Test in the church only look at Jesus in the Gospels, and we do not know that Jesus appeared to the people in the Old Testament. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Jesus was the one that delivered them. Right. Now, how did they have to be delivered? The day that they were going to be delivered, they had to do something. They had to sacrifice a lamb. Yes. Hallelujah. The Passover lamb. Yes. Right? Amen. And they had to put the, the blood on the doorposts. Yes. Now, Jesus is talking to them. We're back in John 8. Jesus is talking to them. And he says, to those who believed in him. You will know the truth, yeah. and the truth will yes. set you free. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And they say, wait a minute. <laughs> They're offended. Yeah. Let me say this. God will offend you <laughs> to change your heart. My Jesus. When you hear a preacher saying something that offends you, before you say that's not true, first say, Lord, are you trying to tell me something? <laughs> I mean, obviously you have to check whether it's in the Word, what the preacher is saying. If the preacher is telling you something that you cannot find in Scripture, then you cannot believe them. Yes. That includes me, that includes Pastor Namra, that includes Pastor Sylvia. Hello? Amen. The Word of God is our only basis. But if, if, the, if we preach from the Word and the Lord offends you, you hear something like, I don't like this. <laughs> don't get mad at the preacher. Okay. He's not the one bringing the message. It comes from God. Your problem is with, with Jesus. Uh-oh. So Jesus offends them. They are offended. We have never been slaves. <laughs> Jesus says, the, everyone who sins is a slave of sin. Now, I want you to see something. Jesus has already established that these Pharisees are sinners. Do you know how? I'm going to show you. Sure. First of all, in chapter 7, the day before, which was the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, mm. he told them, 
You have the law of Moses, but none of you keep it. And you see, this is the Pharisees. They pretend that they keep all the law of Moses. And they had made a, a thousand more laws than what Moses did. You understand? Yes. They had so many laws yes. and regulations. And they made as if they are keeping it. And they're not keeping it, but they, they put heavy burdens on the people to keep uh, that they cannot do. So Jesus says, you have the law of Moses and you don't keep it. <coughs> then... The next day, which is now this day that, that G we are in chapter 8, Jesus comes at the temple and he starts teaching. And here comes the Pharisees. Oh boy. They have a, a trap for Jesus. Mm -hmm. They had found a woman that had been involved in uh, adultery. Now, understand, the Feast of Tabernacles, they, they make tents and they sleep in tents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it looks like this woman was in the wrong tent <laughs> with the wrong man hello yes. do you think there maybe have been more than that uh oh hello yes. let me ask you this here tonight here in motherwell are there people in the wrong tent yes, sir. and in the wrong bed yes. hello Yes. Come on! Don't, don't 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 pretend as if this doesn't happen here. Are there church people that do this sometimes? Yes. Uh oh. Now, now it's getting ugly. Okay. So, all right. But they throw the woman in front of Jesus and say, Jesus. The law of Moses says she must be stoned. Yeah. I want to know, where is the man? Where is the man? <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on. <laughs> For adultery, you need a man and a woman. Amen. Come on. Is that true or not? Yes. I mean, that's what biology tells us. <laughs> okay. You know what? It could have been one of them. Uh oh. So now they stand there. And then we've got Jesus in a corner. They, they feel so good about themselves. And Jesus bends down and he starts writing on the ground. We don't know what he wrote. Then he, 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 he stands up and he says, the one without sin. Yeah. Throw the first stone. Yeah. You know what happens? They stand in there. You hear? Clonk, 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 clonk. Stones are falling. Yes. Because they're dropping their stones. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And it says convicted. The Holy Spirit convicted, cut their hearts and exposed their sin. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now Jesus says, the one who is a slave to sin is a slave. Okay. You see, he's already exposed their sin. He knows they are sinners. So he tells them, you are a slave to sin. And let me say this. Before we know Jesus, every one of us have, was a slave. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Every one of us. Yes, Lord. And some people more than others. Unfortunately, it happens. Even if you, there's people, they grow up in a good house where maybe they, they don't do drugs or anything like that. They grow up in church. But even if you grow up in church, yes. you are still a sinner. Mm. Yo. Yo. Come on. Yes, Lord. yes, Lord. You still have to be born again, just as the worst sinner has to be born again. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Coming to church does not make you a believer. Amen. Oh. 
Are you with me? Yes, Growing yes. up in a Christian house, <laughs> if you don't decide for you, and let me say to the parents here, don't take for granted that your children will follow in the things of the Lord. You have to intentionally teach them and preach the gospel to them and make sure they get saved, make sure they get baptized in the Holy Spirit, make sure they get baptized in water. Sure. Hello? Amen. Don't take it for granted. Sometimes we see this all over the world. The first generation are strong. The second generation, not so strong. By the third generation, the people start to, to fall away. Why? Because we do not hand it over to the next generation by expecting them to find Jesus for themselves. Every generation has to find Jesus for themselves. Okay? But we also know this, that many people, I mean, in, in, here in, in this culture, Many people grow up in slavery to uh, the Sangoma, in slavery to the Tokolosi. Hello? Come on. There's many people sleeping closer to heaven tonight. You understand why? Their bed is so high. Hello? Do they still do that? Do they still lift the bed up because they're afraid of the tokolosi? <laughs> do they still do that or not? Yeah. Hello? <laughs> yeah. Um, and people have been slaves to the spirits of the ancestors. I know now, now you want to stone me. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> but let me tell you, this is anywhere in the world where people do not know the Lord. No matter what their religion is called, their the basic understanding of their religion is they worship the ancestors. All over the world, that is the case. Yes. Um, this is what religion looks like without Jesus. <laughs> and we think that, that if we do right by our forefathers, <clears throat> sorry, that, you know, we can move forward. Do you know the, Israel, the, the Jews, they continually claim their forefathers. Yes. Hello? And Jesus said, you are just like them. <laughs> you do the same sins they did. Hello? And you cannot get saved that way. You're still a slave, he tells them. Because you see, there's only one Savior. Yes, yes, Lord. I said there's only one Savior. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, His Lord. name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Yeah. Only one Savior. His name is Jesus. And Jesus says to them, You see, a slave has no part in the house. Remember, Jesus is leading them out of the slavery. Yes. On the cross, he will be the Passover lamb oh, yes. that will die for their sin. Mm. Sure. Jesus died for our sins. Oh, yes. In every culture around the world, people make sacrifices oh, yes. to try and appease <laughs> the spirits. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. Yes. Do the people do that here? Yes. yes. How many of you know they make sacrifice today? Tomorrow night they have nightmare. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. The spirits are still there. Yeah. They still torment them. Come on. Yeah. They go to 
the Sangoma, they give them money. They say, please get rid of the spirits. They go home, they have more spirits. <laughs> you see, when you give the Sangoma money, you buy more spirits. Yo, 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 yo. Then they go and get some muti. You know muti? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. They come and bury it in their house. They think their house is free. Now there's curses. Come on. All over the world the people do this. And you see, because they keep on being a slave. You can do all those things, but you cannot get free. It's only when you come to the sacrifice lamb of God. There's only one sacrifice. You can kill many goats. In other countries, they kill pigs for sacrifices. In, in Asia, they kill pigs for sacrifices. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or you can kill a chicken, whatever you try. None of it helps. There's only one. There's only one. It's the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He sacrificed on the on, on the cross. Pay the price. For our deliverance. Now I want to show you what happens. Jesus said, when the Son sets you free, you see, He paid the price. Yes, Lord. When you get born again, the moment you get born again, you've been like at a slave market. And, and somebody comes and He pays. And you are set. Given a document that oh says you are free. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and you can go. Yes. You're no longer bound. But now, Paul says, now I become a bond slave. Oh, yes. Because now I freely give myself yes, to the one who died for me. The one who gave his life. Yes, Lord. I freely give my life to be his servant now. Yes. Okay? Now, in John 7, Jesus said this. On the last the greatest day of the feast, this is John 7, 37. He said... Is anyone thirsty? Are you thirsty tonight? He said, Is anyone thirsty? Let him come and drink. He said, If you believe out of your belly, yes, Lord. As the scripture says, will flow rivers of loving water. Last week, last Sunday, I preached the message on Jesus the rock. And in the, in the, and in the desert, as Jesus is leading them out of Egypt towards the promised land, they came to a place where there's no water. And the Lord spoke to him. To Moses and says, Go and stand in front of this rock. And Jesus stood on top of the rock because he said, I will stand on the rock. And Moses hit the rock and it splits open. You see, on the cross, Jesus is hit. Go! Jesus is the one that was cut on the cross by covenant for us. You see, we failed the covenant. But Jesus paid for it. Yes, Lord. I will preach more on that tomorrow. On the covenant. And so now, that rock was hit. It split and water gushed out. Yes, Lord. Come on. On the cross, Jesus was hit. And on the day of Pentecost, the water gushed out. And it flowed from heaven. And they were filled. And out of their bellies, 
And they start speaking in tongues. Yeah. And the river starts flowing out of their belly. Yeah. Now I want to show you something. You can be born again. But if you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit, you cannot walk in freedom. Yeah. It's the baptism in the Holy Spirit yeah. that gives you the power yeah. to become free. Yes, Lord. Paul lived this way before he was born again. He would try to please God but walk in sin. He says that in John uh, Romans 7, yes. the things I want to do, I cannot do. Yo. The things I don't want to do, I do. I and some of you, after you got saved, still had that problem. Yes. Have yes. any of you experienced that? Yes, yes, yes. 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 It's only when you get baptized yes. in the Holy yes. Spirit yes. that you now have power yes. to overcome yes. sin. Yes. 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 Romans 8 verse 2 says, The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. It is the Holy Spirit that delivers you. And when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you receive the spirit of sonship. <laughs> that you now walk as a son and daughter of the King. Not a spoiled brat. <laughs> Hello? It's not this attitude, I'm a, I'm a son, I'm a... <laughs> Hello? Have you seen people do this? Yes. Some of you have seen some preachers on TV like that. Yes. Hello? Come on. No. That arrogance is not the sonship Jesus gives us by the Holy Spirit. That sonship comes with humility. Yes. And w let me say this. We have full rights of sons in terms of the amount of sonship that we have on this side. Yes. But once Jesus comes, we receive the fullness of it. Yes. There's a measure we walk in now, but the fullness is coming. Yes. You cannot claim you're walking in that fullness okay. now. Yes. Hello? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. So... What does that look like? Because he says, when the Son sets you free, you are free. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. That is when you overcome sin. When I got baptized in the Holy Spirit for the first time, I was able to overcome sin. When you Get baptized in the Holy Spirit. You have power to command spirits to go. When you, are, when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have power to use the name of Jesus. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you see Jesus comes into a synagogue in Luke 13 and this woman bent over. Now let me just say this. Sure. Because there's some people that teach that once you are saved, you cannot have any bondage. Good. Have you heard that? Yes. <laughs> Let me say this. If, if you've been in ministry long enough, you will know people come to you with many <laughs> things. They're saved and they have problems. <laughs> uh oh. Yes. Hello? Yes. And they still have bondages. Is this true, Pastor Namrat? It's, it's true. true. And you can now make confession like, I am free, I am free, I am free. Uh -uh. <laughs> you have to be set free. Yes. You have to come to a place of acknowledgement, I have problems. Okay. Okay. Unless you acknowledge that there's a problem here, you cannot get free. <laughs> that is so important. And most of the time, the issues we have problems with is related to sin. 
Hello? Amen. Either sin you committed or sin that was committed against you, but then you're still better against them, so, so you still have sin. Hello? Amen. Maybe your parents did things. Maybe people in community did things to you when you were younger. And you're still bitter. And, and, the, and the spirits torment you because of those things. Maybe before you were saved, you were, you were strongly involved with the things, with the Sangoma or whatever. And now you are saved, but those spirits still torment you. You still have to come now and renounce those things. Are you with me? Some of you have things in your houses that don't belong there. Hello? And you pray and pray and pray and say, Lord, help me. But you have things that does not belong there. You have to come and clean your house. Some of you, this house is full of things. Yes. Anger and bitterness. Maybe you have a boss that mistreated you. Hello? Maybe you're angry at another culture. Hello? Because in the politics, in this country and all over the world, hatred is actually promoted. Yes. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yes. 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 And we cannot be brothers and sisters in the church, but we hate different cultures. Uh oh, Yo. hello? Yo. So we have to come to a place of forgiveness. Yes. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In order to receive forgiveness, we have to give forgiveness. Yeah. Give forgiveness. Give forgiveness. Maybe somebody did you something very unjust. Let me say this they have a debt, they can never repay you. Hello? Oh. You have to cancel the debt. Because understand this. When we came to a service and Jesus revealed himself to us through the gospel and we said, Jesus, come in my heart. We stood before him with a debt that was so big that we could never in this life ever pay it. Hello? And in one moment... He said, paid in full. Finished. But in our back pocket, we had a few bills of other people. Hello? And we think Jesus doesn't know about them. And we said, Jesus, set me free, set me free. And he says, what about your back pocket? Hello? Let's take out those th those accounts that you carry that you don't want to forgive. Help us, Lord. So tonight, choose to forgive. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now let me show you something. What's going to happen? You see, when you come to a place and the Holy Spirit touches you. And you come in forgiveness and you forgive and you release and you let go. And the Holy Spirit pours out his fire upon you and you start to come into freedom. The result of it is this. You come into a place that Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. That Jesus became sin. For us on the cross. So that you and I can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. What that means is that I stand in a place where God regards me. Where Jesus has washed me clean in the blood of Jesus. And he regards me as holy. Jesus. As pure. As righteous. That doesn't mean that I occasionally do not sin. 
Hello? Are you with me? It doesn't mean that you are sinless, but you are free of sin. Do you understand the difference? Before you were saved, you were a sinner, slave to sin. When you get born again and baptized in the Holy Spirit, you are free from sin. But you still occasionally sin. You're no longer a sinner. My identity now is I'm a child of God, Amen. righteous. So I stand in a place of confidence, no longer a beggar. I, are you with me? Amen. And you can look at me and say, I don't like you. And my attitude is, I don't give a rip. My father loves me. Yes. You, you understand? Yes. Because I'm secure now. That is the freedom that Jesus speaks of. And let me just say this. Yes, if there's things that you need to get delivered of, get delivered of them. But once you have been prayed over, you've confessed everything, these things have been broken off. Don't then continue saying, oh, I need more deliverance. I need more deliverance. I need more deliverance. Hello? Amen. Receive your deliverance and now stand in righteousness. Amen. That you are free. Okay. Amen? Amen. Is this helping you tonight? Yes. So Jesus has called us to be free. Let's pray. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, I come. And I pray tonight. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. That we will thank come you, in thank you, freedom Jesus. tonight. You. If there are Brava things that we need to break with, that we will break ah. with. If yes, there are things that we need to renounce, yes. that we will renounce them. Yes, yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. That we will leave those things behind. Yeah. Yeah. And that tonight the yokes will be broken. Mm. And we will walk out tonight in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the righteousness of Jesus. Free indeed. Yes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes. If you feel tonight that as I spoke, this something that the Holy Spirit spoke to you that you need to deal with, I want you to stand, please. Oh, Jesus, Holy Spirit. If you need to forgive someone, oh, Jesus. if there's things you need to renounce, one, two, three. I, I believe there's many more of you. Hello? If you have never, if you've never done this where you actually prayed and said, Jesus, I forgive my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters. Oh. Jesus. I forgive every one of those people that have sinned against me. Yes. If you've never done something like that, then you need to do that tonight. Is there anyone else that needs to stand? Yes. If you've never renounced the things of the past, then tonight Jesus wants you to renounce them. Yes. You know, the involvement with the ancestors, the Sagoma, all of those things. You need to renounce them. Tonight is the night. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Those people that are standing, um, come forward. We're going to pray for you. And let me just ask, um, because we're going to pray a general prayer together. If there's anyone here tonight, you've actually never said to Jesus, come into my heart. And if you're standing, then just stay standing. But if you've never stood up or given your heart to Jesus like that and said, Jesus, come in my heart. And you know if you die tonight that you will be with him. Then also stand, please. If you've never done that, stand. Oh, Jesus. Maybe some of you already are standing, but if not, 
Come, everybody that's standing, come forward. Jesus. Maybe we can take this. Jesus. Up.